This is an interesting story we have here this morning. Actually, it seems like it's almost two stories, really, if you want to get technical a little bit here. Um, Because we have here at the beginning where Jesus sends his disciples out and it sends them into the villages ahead. And there's this village in in the Samaritan countryside that won't accept Jesus. They won't for whatever reason, right? They know that his face is set towards Jerusalem and that he's headed there. So for whatever reason, they won't take him. So two of the disciples... Ask Jesus, shall we rain fire down from heaven? Which seems like a little of an out of there, just kind of, right? Where did they get this from? Where did they get it from? Not Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm close. It's Old Testament. It comes from Elijah, right? There, there was fire that rained down from heaven in the Old Testament prophets. So it's not out of the realm of understanding that God would rain fire down from heaven. The disciples know the stories from the Old Testament, so they know something could happen. So when these people don't accept Jesus, the disciples want to rain fire down from heaven, but Jesus says, no, we're not supposed to do that. Not supposed to do that. Did you find where it's at? He rebuked them, right. He said, he doesn't really say what he says, he just says, no, we're not doing that. Right, And then we have this story of these three disciples that they find along the way that want to come along with Jesus. So really this morning's gospel is what does it mean to be a disciple of Christ? And there's so many different things that we could talk about from this passage of Scripture. Because we have these three people who have three different takes on what they're going to do to follow Him. The first one says, as they're going along the road, someone came up to Jesus and said to Him, I will follow you wherever you go. How many of you have ever said that of Jesus? I'll follow you wherever you go. No one? We've got a lot of things to talk about this morning, man. Come on, really? This, this, this person on the road comes up to Jesus and says, I'll follow you wherever you'll go. And where is he going? Jerusalem. And what's going to happen? They're going to kill him. Are y'all awake? (laughs) But Jesus replies to this man. He says, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. What does that mean? It means that if you're going to follow me, you're going to get the same comforts that I get, which isn't much. I don't have a home. I don't have a bed. I don't have any place to call home. If you want to come along, come along. But you get the same stuff that I do. And then the second one says, he says um, to another, Jesus says, the second one, Jesus says to him, follow me. And he says, let me first go back and bury my father, which is actually one of the Ten Commandments. Do we get that here? Commandment number? Confirmation students? Four. Thank you. Honor your mother and your father. Burying your parents and laying their bodies to rest is what you do to honor them. But Jesus says to this guy, let the dead bury their dead. Uh, Excuse me, Jesus. How does a dead person bury a dead person? Yeah, exactly. How does that work? Right? How does someone who's dead bury someone who's dead? Maybe Jesus is speaking metaphorically here that those who are spiritually dead should bury their dead because you're going to follow me. So let that be. And to the third person, Jesus said, or the third person said, I will follow you. The first and the third say, I will follow you. Jesus has to ask the second one to come along. But the third one says, I will follow you. But let me go do this first. I'll follow you, Lord, everywhere, but I've learned not to say that because God has a really big sense of humor. And when you say, God, I'm willing to do anything except, do you know what you're going to get to do? (laughs) That thing you just said, except. It actually even goes all the way back to my first assignment. When we graduated from seminary and we're there as seniors and we're waiting to be assigned to the synods to which we will receive our first call. 
I say receive because we're standing there waiting and I said, do you remember? I said, anywhere but North Carolina. (laughs) And I got assigned to North Carolina. I did not receive a call anywhere in North Carolina though. But God does not want us to look back. If you're plowing your field and you turn around to look where you've been, what's going to happen to your rows? (laughs) They're going to go all over the place. You can't be looking back at what's behind you. We have to be looking forward. You see, Jesus calls us to leave every single thing behind. And it seems kind of harsh. Because Jesus says, if you follow me, you're not going to have a home. You're not going to have comforts of life. And if you follow me, you have to deny your family. Even to the point of not upholding one of the commandments, if it means you have to follow me. We'll talk about that a little bit later, because that's probably a little unnerving for some people. Not this morning. But we can talk about that later. That's what he says this morning. Whether we catch it or not, and whether we want to really grasp hold of that or not, Jesus says that following me is more important than upholding the commandments. This is what he says to that man when he says, let me go back and bury my father first. And he says, let the dead bury their dead. You're supposed to be focused on me, not on what's behind you, not on any other things that you have to do. Number one is me. The other guy wants to go home and say goodbye. And Jesus says, you can't, we can't do it. You have to stay focused. You have to stay focused on me. And how does this first part of this text play in here? Well, you see, it's because if somebody doesn't agree with us, then obviously they're wrong. Right? If you don't agree with my opinion, then you're wrong and I'm right. I know you're awake now because you're all staring at me intently. (laughs) Right? I mean, but that's what James and John are basically saying. If you're not going to take Jesus, if you're not accepting him, then something's wrong with you. And I agree with that, however. I mean, if you can't accept Jesus, then there's something going on in your life that's not exactly right. Because we should be able to see who Jesus is and what he's done for us and be able to accept the fact that what he's given us is a life beyond all compare and all imagination. But some people aren't quite there yet. And just because they don't believe that, or just because somebody's different or believes things differently or lives a life that's different from us, does that give us the right to then call down fire from heaven and destroy them? Because Jesus called us to do what? Two things. Actually, really three, but the one is wrapped up in the other two. This morning he does it twice. What does he do twice in our reading? He asked two people to? Actually, they asked to follow him. He asked one person. I'm seeing if you're paying attention. He asked one person to follow him. So Jesus calls for us to follow him wherever he's going to lead us. And the two things that are wrapped up inside of that are the two commandments. And what are the two commandments that Jesus gave all of the disciples? The most important things. The sum of the law and the prophets are this. And the second is like the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. To love the Lord your God with all your strength, with all your heart, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And this is the sum of the law and the prophets. And when Jesus says this is the sum of the law and the prophets, that is basically the Old Testament. Because for Jews, the Old Testament is split up into three sections. The law, the prophets, and stories. And the stories help us understand the law and the prophets. So when Jesus says that this is the sum of the law and the prophets, Jesus is telling you the Reader's Digest version of the Old Testament is love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. 
And if you do that, then everything else is taken care of. So raining fire down from heaven is not loving our neighbor. (laughs) Does that mean that we allow them to stay where they're at in something that we know that they're doing that is potentially going to lead them someplace that they shouldn't be with Jesus? No. But what are those things that keep people from Jesus? That's a whole nother sermon series. And we can't cover that this morning. But this morning, it's about what it means to be a disciple. And for those of you who have been reading my newsletter articles over the past couple months, you'll get another one in three days. If you've noticed, they're on what it means to be a disciple. I, the, two months, two months ago, was on a book called Power Surge and the six marks of discipleship. Pray daily, worship weekly, W-E-E-K-L-Y, not W-E-A-K-L-Y. Read your Bible daily. Serve in and out of the church. Live in the relationships amongst the community of the, of the congregation and the community that, that you're planted in. And give of yourself, your treasures, and everything that God has given to you. Six marks of what it means to be a disciple and someone who follows God. To pray daily, to worship weekly, to read your Bible, to serve, to live in relationships, and to give. Not only to the congregation, but beyond to the community. And that's what Jesus calls us to do. He calls us to do these things. And to follow after Him. To be so focused on where He's calling us and where He's leading us that we can't see anything else and everything else falls along the wayside. Now, does that mean by leaving our family behind as He tells this second man, which is probably the hardest thing in this passage to grasp hold of, that we have to deny our family? But I guarantee you that if you follow after Christ and go where He's leading you, that your family will be taken care of in the process. If you don't believe me, just look at this pew over here. Because I've dragged these people all over creation. And you couldn't ask for a better blessing. If you follow God, He will take care of you. I guarantee it. So fix your eyes upon Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith and follow where he's leading you. Showing his love to everyone you meet.